Dear guests, I'm very honored to be here, but I want to go down there because it's useful for me also to go down on the same level as the students are. So here it's much more comfortable. Uh, I would like to uh, say that I'm very, very uh, pleased to be here and I'm looking forward to learn more here in Riga. Uh, I would like, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask during my presentation or afterwards when you see me on a corridor or wherever. Please come ask if you have anything in your mind. And I have to tell you that uh, I have really enjoyed watching Latvia playing ice hockey. And I'm looking forward to see you uh, to having medal this year. Excellent. I come from the north. Uh, Espo is just beside Helsinki, only 16 kilometers away. Uh, I have four children of my own. I've been a principal approximately 14 years and an educator eight years or something like that. And also, I work as a supervision uh, of work. So I'm very keen on, uh, on do something more for the schools. That's probably one of the reasons that I'm also here. Uh, the area where my school is located is very nice. There are different kind of houses, some of the rental apartments, some uh, own houses and some block houses. A lot of green, there are a lot of forests. Uh, you have a lot of different kind of possibilities to do sports. There is a lake beside the school and so on. So very nice area. And I like to start to tell you something about the area because I have reached, I'm very happy about that. I have reached some kind of confidence with, with the parents. So they are very pleased to our school. And we do a lot cooperation between parents and the school. My presentation today uh, uh, is, is the first part, and tomorrow I have a workshop. This is the whole title up here, but today I will try to concentrate on students, because they are the most important thing uh, in our school. We have to start to think about students, and I'm talking something about how we try to uh, take care of the individuals, uh, about the learning process and teaching. I say again, about the learning process and the teaching. That is the right number. First, learning. Second, teaching. Our mission is always student. And we try to find different ways for them to handle information. Not exactly always to learn, learn information, but to build it up. We try to behave very well in our school. It's very important for us. Somehow I feel that we have managed uh, to do that because or every third year, uh, parents and students are evaluating our school, and the results at the moment are very high. They are on the top level in our city and in Finland. And probably you will hear some points here during my presentations that, that you understand how come, how this is possible. But even though I hope that you find even something that you can take to your own school, what we have done. Sorry. This one. Uh, we use pedagogic that take advantage of the benefits of ICT. That's very important thing for us. We are a Microsoft Global Mentor School, but beside that, we think that there cannot be any more teachers who can say, I want to choose myself 
how I teach. It's the benefit for the student that they can learn in different ways. It cannot be any more teacher's decision so much. That's why we have curriculum. It tells us how to teach and what to teach. We put emphasis on drama and performing arts. That's very important for us because we learn more about the interaction and of ourselves during this process. We are begin beginning it already from the preschool and going through all the classes up to sixth grade. We use a lot drama pedagogic in teaching and self-knowledge and interaction skills. These students, they do need interaction skills everywhere. But when you start to think about the new kind of learning environments or learning communities, first you have to think about your values. Everything starts from the values. You have to have a discussion in your community what kind of values you prefer better than the others. And why is that? You have to open these values. What does they mean? And how do they sh uh, show up in your work? If you do that, then they are not anymore just a word. We start our process thinking about our values. Then we build it up some kind of vision. What kind of school we would like to be? Some kind of uh, uh, wonder school or dream school. After that, we try to uh, remember, have a discussion, why we are for. And we found out we are for the students. This is our mission. Then we build up a few steps to go for, forward, some kind of operational plan, few steps. And in a good procedure, there has to be always evaluation. That was the last thing what we think, thought. How we are evaluating our work, are we afraid to take few steps backwards sometimes, or do we have enough courage to go further? Here are our values. They come actually from the Espo City values, but these are our values in our schools, and we put emphasis on these values. Accountability, communality, as I start from the commune, mental and physical health, and safety. Safety is very important. All the learning comes if students feel safe. Respect of environment and nature. You notice that I spoke something about the nature. Finnishness and tolerance. Every year there will be more new things in our schools. In my schools there are probably 17 languages that, that are spoken, but in my opinion, there could be more, but we will see in the next future. Strengths in our schools. School, first one is the leadership. We couldn't do this kind of performance without the leadership. It's shared leadership. I can't take that... Uh, that, that everything that we have done for me, it's the whole community what we have done. Teaching by various methods. We use a lot of uh, library, ICT, we go to the nature, we sit uh, beside the table, we uh, read books, we build up. When I was a history teacher, I uh, built up a lot of buildings, for example, Athens, 
few, few thousand years ago, or Rome a few hundred years ago, or 2,000 years ago. The whole building is a learning environment. You can see some pictures while my uh, presentation. And we started to rethink what kind of school we should have. Students, they don't have shoes anymore inside. They are just walking with the socks. We have open doors. They can go. I'm telling you the truth. I'm usually happy if I can hear some laugh in a corridor or someone is a bit jumping. Not too much, but a bit, you know. Cozy. Uh, then joint teaching. That's very important for us. We started approximately 10 years ago to do joint teaching. It means that we have working pairs and they can share their, um, their skills between each other. They can teach at the same time. But also, for example, I had last year 50 first graders and I had many situations during the week that for these 50 students, there were only uh, eight teachers to teach them up. So only few students per teacher. Joint teaching is mainly used by in, in mathematics and in, in uh, Finnish language because these two are the main, main subjects. And and in joint teaching, we do share these, uh, these students um, like they can, uh, how they can read, for example. These few students here, they know few uh, titles. These can do few sentences, and these are excellent readers. We divide them in th different groups. So everyone are on the group that it's on the same level that he is learning at the same time. Very excellent system and it also has teached cooperation between teachers. ICT, first we built up the whole building, all the equipments there. We have smart boards, wireless net and um, quite many desk uh, computers, laptops, surfaces, and so on. Cozy atmosphere. This is very important for us. You see the pictures. Special needs teaching. We have three different kind of classrooms different uh, special needs classrooms in our school, and we are very skillful to do that. One of the secrets is that they need to go to the gym to play football in the middle of the day. First one, two, three hours lessons, they are easy to handle, but after that they start almost to shake like this. We have to do something. We took them to play football. While they were playing football, they learned also that in the game there are rules. They could disappoint it, be disappointed during the game, but also they could feel to be a part of the team. But they could move, not to be at the same place, at the same time, all the time. Drama. Drama is important. We learn many things to, through the drama. And we use drama in every subject, even in mathematics. Yes, we were hearing also something about PISA results. Finnish res Finland's results, only one part of it, it comes from the school. 
I would say more than half comes from the society. We have a free health care. We have a system that uh, mothers could stay back home with the baby and so on. These kind of things are one part of it. But Finland also, it has come a bit down. I've been in, in Canada, listen, for example, uh, Indonesia and so on, how they are doing and going up and up. In my opinion, I would love to see in Finland more this kind of thinking, what we are at the moment doing. Not trying to reach some high results. It's not the purpose of life. It's something different. But we started to think that every year, that, or, or year after year, in peace or results, also in Finland, these students said that they would rather be somewhere else than in a school. So we should do something. School satisfaction was the idea, what we had to try to get better. One thing is these children are individuals, to understand that. I have visited in quite many uh, schools in Finland. Sometimes I see principals walking in a corridor like this. Very important. Looking somewhere else than these students. They are the purpose of the school. We should be interested in them. I'm the principal who's walking along the corridor and saying, give me five. I'm the one, as a principal, who's taking the re responsibility of meeting this student. When I was a small child, they teach me to say first good morning to the teacher or to the principal. I would say, I'm an author, I'm the principal, oh, I'm so tall. These students could be, for example, a bit afraid or whatever. But if I take the responsibility to meet her, go to the same level or say first, hi, how are you, who are you? Are you interested in that and this? Next time when I see her, she will probably say first hello to me or come to tell what has happened to her yesterday. And that has happened. I'm the principal who is sometimes lifting them up, taking the foot, knocking the roof and saying, what are you doing? Excuse me, girl, what are you doing? Just in front of the principal, how dare you? And then she's laughing, and next time he, she's coming uh, laughing to me and uh, telling me some lovely stories about her learning and so on. I don't have to be so important. I've been more than four years in the, in the military service. I've been important. They have said, said to me, sir, yes, sir, sir, no, sir. But with these students, it's very nice to be at the same level. I'm still the author, no worries. Only once I have given, uh, uh, how do you say, if you leave the child after school back uh, to, to school with me because of the punishment, some kind of. Only once, five minutes, to one girl, because I don't have to. I'm having a dia dialogue with them. Teaching methods. We have to use different kind of teaching methods, not just to sit on the desk, fill up the books. Terribly boring, isn't it? Yeah. ICT. We use a lot of games to learn, for example, mathematics. But also, we fill up the books. But all times when the child had done his two pages of mathematics. Oh, teacher, teacher, I'm ready, I'm ready. Eager to learn more or whatever. Teacher took the paper and, oh, this is for you, it's a copy. You have to do it next. 
Oh, very motivating. But nowadays, we are saying, yes, excellent, you have done it. Now it's your time to go to the Xbox and play that game which teach you the same thing. It's motivating. If I do my work, I can go to do the same thing with the Xbox or whatever machine, but that's the whole idea. Also, we use a lot of programming. We use Kodu, even so that our preschoolers, six years old students, are doing programming. One idea is to teach them programming. Okay, it could be fun. It can teach them something about uh, to teamwork, also as uh, in, in some kind of office work in the future. But the second part, which is, I think, sometimes even greater part, is that our students are teaching younger students to do programming. And that's an excellent thing what we are doing. They are on the same level. They know the words. They know which rope they have to pull if someone doesn't understand how to do programming or whatever. And these teachers, small teachers, they can be happy. Oh, I could teach him to play that game. Or I am so skillful that I could teach them. They can be proud also sometimes. Using ICT, one important thing is to remember that teacher, he don't have to know everything about how to use ICT. No, it's not the important thing, not at all. The most important thing is that these students, they can do that. But you are the one as a teacher to be um, responsible of pedagogic. You decide how, when, where, what you are going to do. But the student is probably the one who makes the idea uh, what kind of uh, program I use or what kind of pictures or videos I shall put there. This is an this is interesting point. One of the best solutions that we had during when we, when we started this uh, using more ICT was that I had an ICT teacher. I gave him five extra lessons during the week to do joint teaching with other teachers in my school so that they could learn to use ICT. He come over, came over to the classroom and they started to teach. Sometimes he teached and the uh, real teacher was looking beside. Sometimes the real teacher was teaching and he was looking beside and giving some hints how to do it. Or they were doing it together. But the idea was that we put, uh, uh, we, we just a bit lowered the risk of doing something wrong because he was at present at the same time. These teachers, were, uh, they dared to ask what kind of problems uh, there, there might be, or they could say that I cannot do that one. We started from the DJ cameras, video cameras, laptops, some programs, for example, PowerPoint, and we went further to using Surface, programming, and whatever. Smart boards. And the using of ICT has increased totally a lot. Nowadays, even that, though that we have probably 80 or 90 devices for 360 students, sometimes if you want to use these computers in, in a specific lesson, you have to order them in more than one month advance because everyone likes to use these equipments. Next autumn we will have more and I'm very happy about that. 
safety. As I already mentioned, there cannot be learning if students had to be all the time like this. If someone is going to hit me or if I say something, are they going to laugh me? Or the teacher is going to yell me if I uh, open my mouth. So safety, very important thing. You can divide it in four halves. First one is physical safety. Social safety. Physical safety is easy to say. It's the building or the learning environment in, in a whole society. Social safety, it's the group where you are working in. Psychological safety is, is your mind. Is it free for open? Do I feel so safe that I can, I can, I can learn? And the fourth is pedagogical safety. That anyone doesn't go to do parachuting. We are almost doing that, but not, not yet, but maybe someday. Reliable adults. I told you how we start to do relationship between students and teachers. All the teachers are trying to do the same thing. Be a reliable adult. Cozy atmosphere. As I told you, we walk around the corridors, in a dining hall, in a library, in a gymnastic hall, wherever. The idea is that the whole building is a learning environment. We have made a different kind of solutions for that. For example, in a dining hall, there are nowadays only half of the tables that we ha had a few years ago, because we made a non-stop lunch. These students know exact the time when they have to be there. They don't have to be on the line all the time. Uh, they can put more food to the line. They can be alert about the allergic things. And there is no noise because of that. There are only one quarter of the children at the same time having lunch. And the other, the whole space is at the moment library, somehow. There, there are some cozy sofas. They can sit down, lie down, read. They can go to do their some teamwork. Here you see some, of the, some pictures of my school. This is the dining hall. Nowadays we have round tables. Round tables are somehow better because there is easier to move between these tables. But you see, we have these books here and the sofas. Colors, cozy. Outside we have green areas. This is some kind of media room for us. We do there some drama. Also, we use a lot of, uh, a lot of computers in there, surfaces. We even like to be there so much that we teachers, we have there our meetings, because it's so cozy. This is our actual library. We call it launch. Imagine the price. Less than 2,000 euros, because we are so keen on our work that we, went, we took a van and we went to a shop and bought these uh, furniture by ourselves and built them up. One old teacher who was a few years ago in our school, now on pension already, she came during our mission. What are you doing? Where we are building up this? It's not your job to do. Yes, we know, but we like to do it. We love to do it. It's important for us. This is the picture from the, our uh, classroom. You see tables, not any more desks. And that's our solution for the idea that we use so much uh, laptops and, and surfaces and so on that we, it's, it's a risk to fill up the desk during the lessons. They can fall down. 
But at the same time, these teams can work beside the table, and it's on the same level, not like with the desks, always clong, 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 whatever. Also, it gave more space to the classroom. It's easier to move there, because we are not sitting beside the tables anymore so much. These students, they can take their laptop and walk around the school, take the fat boy, uh, these fat, fat boys, these blue ones, the, the, here is the orange one, they can take those and go wherever in the classroom. Take the laptop and, and work. Find out information, build up information. We have also adventure in our curriculum. It's one part of self-knowledge. These students, they can find out what they can do or what they cannot do. But the most uh, wonderful thing is the seeing someone to go over the border. I did it. I'm so scared I cannot go down there. But when they do it, I did it. They are so happy. It's wonderful to see them. And this is some kind of learning process for them. If I dare, I can manage to do that. Then I have a small video from the classroom, I hope. A lot of space, even that it's quite small classroom, but still quite a lot space. And lights, some carpets, that kind of things, and a smart board. There are even two webcams. We have made a night school, we call it night school, all, all over to Atlantic, to Canada. We have a, a school there. We are doing cooperation between them. And it was funny to see when they were, were working together in the evening. Uh, there was this panel TV in front of the classroom. It was Atlantic. Our students were making a round like this, and the Canadians, they were doing the round like that. So there was a circle, and Atlantic was between them. And they started to do mathematic games. They sang some Christmas songs. They were drawing. From Canada, they gave some instructions to build up uh, some kind of uh, handwriting and that kind of things. And our students were doing, and then we sent those works to Canada, and they sent their works back to Finland. But these equipments give the opportunity to motivate children. School satisfaction and 21st century skills. I see that these two things go, are going together. I see these skills and attitude. I want to line up attitude. Because even that we learn to use some kind of device today, or the program today, it's not the same after a few years. Attitude matters. If these students learn that they have to be open-minded to new kind of technology, it's a benefit for them in a future working life or social life. This is our way to see ICT. It's a tool of performance. Even though that you are writing down, if you find out information, if you build up information, even though you are performing your own ideas, how you, you are building up the knowledge and, and doing your performance, 
how to say this thing. You can put there pictures, videos, but still it's one way, some kind of performance. Knowledge building, how to handle knowledge. It's not enough to find out information, you have to be critical and so on. Not the Google is not the only way to find out information from the ICT way. Self-evaluation and self-knowledge. We put emphasis on drama. But as I told you, we have this adventure. We have an extra lesson for sports. They go do golf, downhill skiing, snowboarding. These are all some kind of tools for us to build up students' self-knowledge. But not the only ones. But somehow, there's a point. Interaction skills and cooperations. The same idea. These students, they do need interaction skills at home, with the neighbors, in hobbies, in a future life, in a teamwork. Interaction skills. It's very important for them. That's the reason why we saw that we, a few years ago, that we have to put some emphasis on drama because of that. Innovative working culture. How does it come from? Tomorrow I will try to explain you more how we have built up our community. We have a structure. We have an organization, but also we have a structure where to have a dialogue. But when we are talking about innovative things, some, some people do say that then it's, everything has to be free, that you can be innovative. I say that sometimes, in a football, even in a football game, there has to be rules but you can still be Ronaldo or whoever and be creative. But if there are rules, then it's comfortable to everybody, everyone, to work in there. It's a working place for all of us, students, teachers, and parents are always welcome. There has to be a structure, as I mentioned. Places where to have meetings, timetables, when to have meetings, and a structure how to have a dialogue. We do open memos of everything. I have a dialogue during one week. It's, it's more than six and a half hours that I'm having a dialogue with my workers. It's in a structure. We have this working pair system, enthusiasm. Hey, you are so good in history. Could you please tell me how we could do this? How we could build up some kind of house? Excellent idea. I would love to do that. Is it okay for you that we put something here and here? We are building up like a crystal ball. It's uh, like a crystal light. All the time, more lights, more lights. We are supporting each other. We are excited to work together. Leadership, uh, sorry, teamwork, it means that it's a resource. If you have to ask something or you need a hand, you can ask from the team, but also sometimes there is some experience. We have teachers who are on, in, in different ages. Newcomers, they can ask from the, the teachers who have more experience and so on. This can, you can manage with, with this pro project doing by, like this. Leadership. Always teachers, they need support from the principal or from the deputy or from the team leader or from the working pair. But always there has to be some leadership 
support and safety. The safety is thing, as I tried to explain to you, where everything starts for the students, but also for the personnel. If teachers are scared to say their different opinion than the leader has, then we are stuck. They have to, come, uh, have, to have, have to have an opportunity to say their own opinion. Then we can be creative and innovative as a society. I have always tried to explain this so that if we are waiting teamwork and cooperation from the students, we have to do it also by ourselves in a community. Show them up some example. I'm working with my working bear. I'm working, I'm doing teamwork. So the children can see that we are working like this. But if we go further, if we do accept that these students will learn in the school, we have to learn by ourselves. That's the one thing that I'm talking more tomorrow. We do an innovative school via dialogue, via motivation, inspiring, safety and support. Students will have from, from our school self-knowledge and evaluation skills, interaction skills, ICT, knows how to build up knowledge in a changing world. Performance skills, ICT attitude and skills to handle. These are, in our opinion, these most important things that these students will need up to a few years when they go to the working life. Then we have this interaction, interaction video from our school. It will last approximately 10 minutes. Please enjoy. Joustavissa opetusjärjestelmissä oppilaat jaetaan oman taitotasonsa pohjalta erilaisiin ryhmiin. Ja joustavilla opetusjärjestelmillä huomioidaan oppilaiden yksilölliset tavat oppia ja näin myös ylläpidetään oppilaan oppimismotivaatiota. Kallion koulussa neljäsluokkalaiset oppilaat saavat kummioppilaan esikoululaisista. Kummioppilaat auttavat esikoululaisia koulun sääntöihin ja tapoihin tutustumisessa. Yhdessä 
tehdään metsäretkiä, käydään pulkkamäessä, askarrellaan ja luetaan kirjoja. Kummisuhde jatkuu kolmen vuoden ajan, kunnes kuudesluokkalaiset lähtevät yläkouluun. Antaa kivoja läksyjä ja tehtäviä ja tykkää kaikista koulun lapsista ja opettaa kivoja. Kallion koulu on yksi Espoon vanhimmista kouluista ensi vuonna jo satavuotias. Meidän toimintaajatuksemme on monipuolinen tiedonetsintä hyvin käyttäytyvässä ja turvallisessa oppimisympäristössä. Ilmaisutaito näyttelee suurta roolia meidän koulussa. Lisäksi erilaiset värit, lämminhenkisyys, mitä koulumme pystyy tarjoamaan yhteisissä tiloissa, Olkoon kysymys ruokalasta, mediateekistä tai kirjastosalista, ovat niitä elementtejä, jotka lisäävät oppilaiden viihtyvyyttä. Me näemme Viherkallion koulussa tietotekniikan ilmaisun välineenä. Haluamme, että oppilaat oppivat käyttämään tietotekniikkaa nimenomaan tiedon etsimisessä, tiedon muodostamisessa, sillä lailla miten he itse kokevat tiedon rakentamisen mallia. Koemme, että tietokone on nimenomaan ilmaisun väline, jolla oppilas ilmaisee uutta tietoa, ilmaisee itseään kuvallisesti ja sanallisesti. Viherkallion koulu on ilmaisupainotteinen koulu ja lähtökohtana tälle olemme ajatelleet, että mitä ihminen tarvitsee tulevaisuudessa. Yksi tärkeä elementti on vuorovaikutustaidot. Viherkalliossa nähdään ilmaisutaito monipuolisesti, ei ainoastaan draamana, vaan me löydämme elementtejä kättentaitojen, kuvataiteen, musiikin ja liikunnan osa-alueilta. Kaikki ilmaiseminen, mitä oppilaat tekevät, niin on positiivista ja, ja vahvistaa sitä heidän valmiuksiaan tulevaisuuden elämässä. Viherkallion koulussa on vahva yhteisöllinen toimintakulttuuri niin oppilaiden, huoltajien kuin koulun henkilöstön kesken. Tällä vahvuudella haluamme edelleen kehittää kouluamme eteenpäin ja luoda oppilaille persoonallinen koulupolku, jossa huomioimme heidät erillisinä opiskelijoina ja annamme heille mahdollisuuden tulevaisuuden oppimiseen tänä päivänä nykyaikaisessa oppimisympäristössä. Tervetuloa tutustumaan Viherkallion kouluun. Pääsee esiintymään joka vuosi ainakin musiikki-inspiraatioissa, joissa saa aika vapaasti esittää mitä haluaa. Sitten, että, sitten meillä on noita esim. joulujuhla- ja kevätjuhlaesityksiä, joissa saa myös esittää. Ja 
No, sit meillä on Kalevalan päivänä meillä yleensä pidetään joku esitys. Meillä oli ainakin meidän luokka piti näytelmän. Ja sitten siinä oli mukana soittoja. Esiintymisessä parasta on se, kun saa esittää melkein mitä haluaa ja sitten kun nousee sieltä lavalta, kun saa isot uploadit, niin se on kans kivaa. Vierkallion koulussa käytetään tietotekniikkaa apuna oppimisessa ja opetuksessa, jotta oppilaat oppisivat taitoja tulevaisuutta varten. Tietotekniikka nähdään myös välineenä, nimenomaan välineenä, joka tukee oppimista ja auttaa oppilaita saavuttamaan parempia oppimistuloksia. Emme käytä tietotekniikkaa pelkästään sen takia, että haluaisimme opetella itse tietotekniikkaa, vaan näemme sen nimenomaan välineenä oppimiseen ja tärkeänä osana lasten tulevaisuutta. Pyrimme käyttämään monipuolisesti erilaisia laitteita, jotta lapsilla olisi valmiuksia alakoulusta siirryttäessä yläkouluun käyttää monipuolisia opiskelutaitoja ja siten, siten edistyä paremmin elämässään. Täällä opittaisi niinku käyttämään sitä tietotekniikkaa ja se on erittäin mukavaa se käyttää sitä. Mä oon oppinut kirjoittamaan paremmin ja ohjelmoimaan kodupeliä. Ja... Hei, olen Antti Karvonen ja Augon Kurhon ja Usvan isä. Olen itse koulun entinen oppilas ja kävin tätä koulua 30 vuotta sitten eli aivan 80-luvun alussa. Koulussa on muuttunut sen jälkeen moni asia. Vanha, vanhan liikuntasalin tilalle on rakennettu hieno mediateekki ja luokkiin on tuotu uusi tekniikka. On jännä nähdä, miten modernissa, modernissa ympäristössä lapset käyvät koulua nykyään verrattuna omiin kouluaikoihin. Viherkallion koulu on ollut jo omista kouluajoista niin lähti erittäin hyvä koulu siinä mielessä, että täällä ei ole esiintynyt kiusaamista. Koulussa on aina ollut hyvä henki ja käsittääkseni oppimistulokset ovat olleet hyviä. 